Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So I'll be honest, this FPV hobby hasn't got me excited in a long time. The biggest thing in the last couple of years that really got me excited about this hobby was this, the DJI Digital FPV video system. And unfortunately, it's still pretty stupid expensive for uh, for the goggles, for the transmitters, for the cameras, all that stuff still very expensive. It's very locked down. It's still very proprietary. And one of the big downsides to it, other than the cost, is how do you how do you have people ride along with you? That's been the the awesome part about analog FEV is hand somebody one of the tiny little screens, hand them a set of loaner goggles, just something, just tune into a channel. Hey, watch. How do you do that on DJI? You got to have a second set of goggles. Who's got a second set of goggles? I mean, second set of goggles is what? Almost $550, $600 for a second set of goggles just so you can have somebody ride along to see and enjoy the, the, the beauty that is digital FPV through the DJI digital FPV system. No, oh, it's ridiculous. What other options are there? Well, there's that stupid smart controller, which is $700, but you do get an HDMI output on it. So it does give you a few more options for what to do with your video in the end, but... Man, that thing is way too expensive for what it is. I mean, if you use other DJI products that worked with that screen, I know the screen's beautiful on it. Um, maybe it makes sense. Or if you're doing production work and you've got to be able to pipe the video from your goggles out to, say, uh, a, another crew that's watching what you're doing and giving you direction, okay, it's a business expense. I get it. But what about the average Joe? What about me? What about you? What about uh, somebody at a race that wants to watch somebody race DJI at a race course? Well, up till now, we haven't had any good way to do it besides that stupid screen. Since the FUV Out project started with the DJI goggles, there have been many solutions to get your video out of your DJI goggles uh, to a phone, to a PC, to a screen, to say, Another set of goggles, even analog goggles. This is the one I like the best. This is called Cosmo Streamer for DJI FPV goggles. This is a DIY project. It is completely free, other than the cost of the hardware you're gonna need, which honestly isn't all that much. Uh, but what it does is it allows you to connect your DJI FPV goggles to a box, a single board computer, in this case, a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, and allow you to send that video to a phone, to a browser, to OBS with a little bit of extra hardware and a little bit of extra work. Uh, but it is a completely standalone solution, takes all the overhead off of your PC if that's something you're concerned about. And uh, you get that awesome digital out from your goggles to whatever else you want to add it into. DJI FUV on my Orcas? Yes, please. I can do that. I can watch DJI quality video on the OLEDs that, well, let's face it, the DJI V2s should have been. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the hardware and the things that we're gonna need to make this happen. First thing we need to do is we need to go to the Cosmo Streamer website. That's this right here. We need to find the files for this project. We're gonna go down to products and they have this for a bunch of DJI type stuff, but we're gonna come down to Cosmo Streamer for DJI FPV goggles. Click on that. And next, we're gonna click on DIY. This is gonna take us to the DIY page. Here's the hardware. We can run this on a Raspberry Pi 4B or a 3B or B+. Um, I have tried it on the 4B, works great. The 3B works great as well. It's not a lot of processing power you need to do this. You just need to have one or the other. The Raspberry Pi 4 can be bought from anywhere from $35 to $45 and up, and the 3B from about $35 and up, depending on uh, how much RAM you want to have on yours. The one I have here for the Raspberry Pi 4 is a, oh, not that one. The Raspberry Pi 4 I have here is an 8 gig model. Didn't really matter, it's just what I had sitting around. And the 3B plus I have here, I believe this is a 4 gig model. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to get a SD card, pick any micro SD card, preferably one from a reputable manufacturer, uh, like this PNY card I have here. And honestly, eight gigs is going to be enough. It's going to be more than enough for what you're going to do. But, um, I just happen to have a 16 gig card here, whatever, it doesn't matter. And, um, you don't need it, but I'd highly recommend an enclosure for your Raspberry Pi. 
the best Raspberry Pi enclosure that I have come across is this one here by Flerk. It is a uh, it's a machined aluminum case. It dis dissipates heat very well. This one happens to be for the this one happens to be for the uh, Raspberry Pi four. Uh, the the Raspberry Pi three and the four do have different ports, so the cases are not interchangeable between the two. So keep that in mind if you just do decide to go down this road. Uh, if you're going buying a Raspberry Pi three, you have to get a case for Raspberry Pi three. But uh, this is a very minimal case, very nice. I really like this case. For a little bit extra flair, you can get something like this. This is a case for Raspberry Pi 4 as well, uh, except this one's a little bit different. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier, but it includes a three and a half inch LCD, uh, 60 frames per second monitor, touch panel, you know, interface. Uh, and we can actually make this work kind of like the Immersion RC Power Play, where you can see what's going on. So I don't need to have this plugged into another set of goggles. I can let somebody just hold this guy here and watch my video as I'm flying. Now, I will say that this screen, or at least this one I have up here, I'll put a link in the video description, and just like everything else. Uh, this really does kind of suck. The refresh rate is really slow. It is not 60 frames per second. I don't know why I'm not super well versed in all things Raspberry Pi. Uh, but this, uh, it works. It gets the idea across. You can see the video, but it's very smeary, very jaggy. It does tear pretty bad. Uh, but if you guys, if you guys know of a better uh, screen interface for this, please let me know. Put it in the comments below. I would really like to try to find something that works a bit better than this. Uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about in the end. All right, after we got our hardware straightened out, we need to download the files for the Cosmo Streamer. Pretty easy. Click this link here and it'll download the zip contents for the Raspberry Pi. The other thing we're gonna need is a, uh, an, a disk imaging software. I prefer to use Belena Etcher and that's this piece of software here. Uh, just download it, install it. And what we're gonna do then is we're gonna take our SD card, this guy here, and put in your SD card reader. Go ahead and put that in your SD card reader, however you're gonna do that on your, on your computer. We're gonna run Belana Etcher. I'm sure I'm getting the name wrong. And we're gonna come down here, we're gonna go flash from file. We're gonna find that Cosmos Streamer file open. Select target, make sure you pick the right drive. You don't wanna put this on something you don't want it to be on. And we're gonna hit select and flash. This is gonna take a couple minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna take a couple minutes to write, decompress, verify, all that stuff. We'll come right back when we're done with that. All right, while that software is being written to our SD card, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the cases here. This one is the Flirt case. This is that random generic touchscreen LCD display. Um, Raspberry Pi 3, you can tell because it uses a uh, USB, um, micro USB for power, and the Raspberry Pi 4 uses a USB-C connector for powers. Uh, the HDMI out is the micro HDMI out. HDMI versus uh, a regular HDMI, just a few little differences. Uh, so just follow whatever, whatever, whatever brand case you decide to get, just follow the instructions that come with the case on how to install your particular card. Um, some cases come with uh, heat transfer pads, some have heat sinks, whatever, just follow the direction. This case here, yeah, this one is the touchscreen one. Go ahead and line your board up. Make sure we get our connector lined up properly for the screen. And let's go ahead and snap that sucker together. And while that software is being written to the SD card, your computer may be going bonkers, opening windows, closing windows, telling you things need to be formatted, this and that. Just ignore all that stuff. Just let the Etcher program finish. Once it's finished, go ahead and uh, just close that and pull your SD card out of your computer. 
and just go ahead and insert your SD card. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to power up our box. So the next thing we do is we need to uh, connect our goggle, our next thing we need to do is connect our Cosmo streamer to a set of goggles. Uh, in this case, I'm using a, a cam link just for a, a video interface. Uh, you're gonna wanna use the first HDMI port and the one closest to the power port. And we'll go ahead and plug in our power. Now, this process does tend to take a few minutes the first time you power on because that, that SD card is extracting, expanding itself, writing a bunch of files, but we should see this window come up, Cosmo Streamer, DJI FPV goggles, and honestly, this thing is ready to rock the way it is. Uh, but if we're using the touch screen, this isn't gonna work yet. Gotta do some configuring over on the computer. All right, so let's head over there and uh, I'll show you what you gotta do. So the other thing we're gonna need to do to make this work right, if you wanna use the touch screen, if you don't wanna use the touch screen, this thing should work perfectly fine out of the box. We need to download the Cosmo Viewer application uh, for your particular platform, Windows, Mac, whatever. So go ahead and download that, install it. And the Raspberry Pi transmits a SSID, that's a Wi-Fi network. We're gonna to wanna to connect to that. So it's gonna show up as Cosmo Streamer and the password is 12345, 12345. Super creative. I think that's the password to my, uh, my briefcase. All right, so once we have that app installed, we've connected to that SSID, we are gonna wanna click on the gear icon for the device settings. Make sure we select DJI FEV for the camera type. And we're gonna go down to display. And over here, we're gonna go to TFT display, SPI bus. We're gonna enable TFT display. And the model is, I believe this one is the 3.5 inch A model. And as you see over here, we now have a duplicate of our display. And there's a lot of other settings we can play around with in here. Uh, I really wouldn't touch anything for now, but that's really all we have to do. We can flip the rotation if we wanted. We can uh, enable uh, touch screen. I don't really know what touch screen is gonna do for you, but there's things that you can do here. Well, the other thing we can do is update the stream box. So we can hit update from server. Yes, I wanna update it from the server. It's gonna download everything to the Cosmos streamer. It's gonna set it up and we're gonna be good to go. So while that's booting up, the next thing we're gonna need is just a USB-C to USB-A cable. We're gonna plug that into DJ goggles where you can plug it into. And the other end is gonna go into one of the USB ports on the Cosmos streamer. Just add power and let's go ahead and plug in a quad. And there you go. We have we have video on the Cosmo Streamer box itself. We have video being output through the HDMI port to a uh, cam link I have hooked up to the computer. You can hook that up to your uh, other goggles. You can hook it up to any monitor that takes HDMI. And that is it. What else can we do with this thing? Well, I'm glad you asked there, partner. If we're connected to that, SSID, we can watch it directly on this Cosmo Streamer app. Or if our buddies are there, they can connect to it and they can go to this, this network address. Wait for it to load. This isn't the ideal thing. The Pi is pretty darn slow at this. Okay, well, it's not working right now, but it does work. Um, just having a bit of a connection issue right now. All right, well, it, it does work sometimes. It, it's just a little little glitchy just because it's such a, um, a weak signal coming out of that Raspberry Pi 4. Live video out. You can do a screen grab off that if you want to. Um, so the sky is the limit. There's a lot of different things you can do with this and this is all open source hardware and software. Now the latency is definitely too high to fly off of. It's not that bad, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely higher than you would want to fly if you were in the, uh, the spectator set of goggles, monitor, whatever it is. Uh, the other thing is you are gonna need to turn off auto temp control. Um, 
for some reason it just doesn't work if that's enabled sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but it's not very reliable if you want the most reliable t connection you need to turn that feature off so uh, i'm going to plug this thing before it gets too hot so that's it that is how you can get dji digital fpv video out to just about anything as long as you have the right cables and the right adapters all you're going to need is a case a pi an sd card a way to power the pi a USB-C to USB-A cable from the goggles to the Cosmos streamer box, and then HDMI out to whatever you want to send it to. Send it to your your uh, HDOs, to your Orcas, to your uh, your capture card, to I don't know, you don't even need that. You can just live stream it off of the uh, the the Wi-Fi network that comes out of this thing. Uh, there are a lot of options here. There's a lot of things you can do, and I'm really, really excited about this. Uh, I love doing my Sunday afternoon live streams. I did one with this. It didn't look very good just because uh, I couldn't do a, I couldn't do a high enough bit rate to make it look decent on uh, YouTube just because I was, uh, I was using a hotspot off my phone. So, yeah. you know, it is what it is. But anyways, pretty easy. It's well, the software's free. The hardware obviously isn't, but uh, I'm willing to bet if you're into 3D printing, you probably have a Raspberry Pi sitting around. All right, well, there you go. What do you guys think? Is this something that you're possibly thinking about doing? Is that something holding you back with uh, the DJI system is being able to fly with your friends? Is that why you still fly analog? Do you even fly analog anymore? Uh, I race, so I still fly analog all the time. Uh, DJI is kind of flying for me because it's fun. I really enjoy that high definition view that you get through the DJI system, even though it does have plenty of limitations. We all know what they are, but it has them. This is one major hurdle out of the way for the DJI system. Um, I really do like the way this case looks, works. Uh, I like the screen, but honestly, uh, for my purposes, I like to travel light and fast. I'll probably switch everything over to this flirt case just to keep it uh, nice and compact. Um, I'll put some video in of me flying around and you can kind of see the tearing that I get on this. Uh, if you guys know of a better screen for this purpose, let me know. I, I really would like to try it out to find something that looks, not so much looks better, but doesn't have the weird tearing and the low frame rate. But uh, eh. all right, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. If you want to support me, go to tweetfb.com, click those links. Uh, make sure you click the links in the video description. Those are affiliate links. They'll give me a cut. So I would greatly appreciate that. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, stay positive, folks.